Let's break this vector into components if we know some of the angles involved with this problem. So first, go ahead and draw in the direction so you can see those triangles really well. Label all the angles, look for similar triangles. And then we're going to figure out which side of the triangle is cosine and sine. Cosine is adjacent. Okay, I'm just going to make a table here to split all my forces up and try out Excel. Even if you're not familiar with Excel, this is just, it's really nice and organized to, to break up your forces. So I've got one column for my forces, one column, this is going to be the angle between the vector and each of the coordinate systems. Formatting it here underneath the Home tab, I like to create my own tables rather than use the ones that Excel gives you. This is for the 200 Newton force. Okay, the Y component. Straight up, this is the cosine theta adjacent to that 20 degrees that we're putting in here. Hypotenuse, this is the side of the triangle on the ground. And then we're going to use that hypotenuse to get fx, which is opposite the 40 degrees. So opposite is sine, and then z is adjacent to the 40 degrees. That would be cosine. The angles, this is the angle between the vector and the coordinate axes. And those are adjacent to one another. So those are all going to be cosines. Here's the equations for breaking our force into x, y, z components. We're just walking around those right triangles. And the angles, those are all formed by cosine, the adjacent side. Let's go ahead and try this out for the other side to repetition. That's what gets the stuff in your permanent memory. So we're looking at the 100 Newton force this time around. And again, draw in those components so you can really see where those right triangles are on your picture. This time we have y going up and x is going to be in the negative direction. It's going over to the left hand side this time around. Okay, there's our angles, there's our hypotenuse. And we could just grab this table that we had last time and copy it, make another table down here for our 100 newton force. I'm going to erase out all those equations though. We have angles in slightly different places so we have to redo our equations. The y component of the 100 newton force, this is the opposite side. So that's going to be the sine of that 35 degrees. And then down on the ground, this becomes our hypotenuse of the triangle on the ground, but it's the adjacent side of the 35 degrees, so that's cosine. So Katoa. Now that we have the hypotenuse, we can grab that, and our x is going to be the opposite side of that 30 degrees, so that's sine, and remember the direction, it's negative on this one. The z is adjacent to our 30 degrees, so that'll make it cosine. We're grabbing that hypotenuse up there again. And there are the forces. So just look at those equations. Here's the triangle standing up and the triangle on the ground. Let's fill in the angles. This is the angle between the 100 Newton vector and each of the axes. So between 100 newtons and the y-axis, between 100 newtons and the x-axis, between 100 and the z-axis, and those are all adjacent to one another. So we're looking at the cosine is why we use the cosine there. Time to modify. So we're just going to change a few of these angles around, change the forces around. If you want to create your own modified problems, I'm just using the snipping tool here. It has some writing tools on it. It's pretty simple. So here's what you're going to solve for your quiz. Let me know if anything in there is confusing to you.